so once again good afternoon to all of you uh, in the last lecture we discussed homeomorphisms uh, which is a kind of bijective continuous function and its inverse is also continuous function so uh, that is what we discussed in last lecture today i want to discuss uh, a, spe a special topic which is which is known as is quotient topology so if you remember we have discussed certain examples to find new topological spaces one of the ways to uh, use the product topology right so same way here we can discuss quotient topology so for quotient topology let us first uh, recall what is the quotient map so if, if you are uh, uh, aware you already aware that uh, if we have a equivalence relation then uh, we can discuss several uh, equivalent classes and uh, that will give us uh, a particular quotient map so let us just quickly recall the definition of equivalence classes so uh, first of all what is the equivalent relation so a relation usually we denote it by tilde on a given set x of course x is a non empty set is a subset so sometimes uh, some books use uh, relation by r which is a subset of x cross x right so basically it is a ordered pair and uh, xy belongs to r and only if we shortly write x is related to y right so this all things we already know and uh, this uh, yes yeah. so in short where we write x is related to v if and only if x y is element of r right so this is notation and uh, so this is a relation and what about the the equivalent relation so equivalence relation on set x is a relation tilde satisfying the following three condition first is the re reflexivity so x is related to x for every x second condition is uh, symmetric so whenever x is related to y then y is related to x and third third condition is transitivity that is whenever x is related to y and y is related to z then we get x is related to z so such a relation which is a equivalent relation is uh, given to us then we know that we can discuss certain equivalence classes so what is equivalence classes so if uh, if i have equivalence relation on set x 
and let any element x of x then the equivalence class of x which uh, we usually denote by box x which is defined as all the y elements y of y in x so that x is related to y or y is related to x because it is a relation is symmetric so it doesn't matter if x is related to y that will imply y is related to x so <clears throat> so for example we know that uh, uh, there are several examples of equivalence relations so modulo 2 modulo 3 uh, such a way we can define equivalence relation on the integers and uh, once we have if equivalence classes uh, we know that note that if x is related to y that means equivalence class of x and y both are same because uh, this says that if y is element of x if it is related to y and same way i can re rewrite this as uh, all x such that y is related to x so both these sets will be same because we are choosing x and y which are related to each other so therefore these two are same whenever x and y are related <coughs> right so these two sets are same only when x is equivalent to y otherwise they may not be equal sets so now we will use notation that x is equivalent what are the all equivalence classes of x so the set of all equivalence classes that will be denoted by x quotient tilde this is just uh, the set of all equivalence classes and uh, once we have all the equivalence classes uh, with respect to the given equivalence relation we can discuss the quotient map so let us see what is the definition of quotient map <coughs> so the canonical Canonical means natural map, which is subjective phi from x to x quotient tilde defined by phi of x is class of x. Right? So for every element we will get equivalence class that x we are mapping to that equivalence class so this is the map phi so this canonical surjection is known as as a is coming here as a is quotient map so this quotient map i will define later on what is meaning of uh, the de the definition of quotient map but uh, in short this map is known as quotient map when we discuss the equivalence classes so is it clear that uh, this map is a contour map So 
if I have a uh, equivalence class, can I always find x such that it is equivalence class of that x? So, so let us take some sim simple example. For example, if I take x equal to the set of integers and uh, I define x is related to y, 2 divides y minus x or x minus y, then you can see that it is uh, equivalence. This is equivalence relation. And uh, so, so what, what, what will be the equivalence classes? So what will be the equivalence class of one? So that will be all y, which is integer, so that y minus one is of the form 2k. Right, put some integer k. <clears throat> so what elements we will get in this set? So we need it just y from which I subtract one, it will be even number. So can I take y to be zero? So if, if I, I subtract zero minus one, whether it is even number, zero minus one is minus one. So it is not even number, right? Minus one is odd number. So minus uh, zero does not belongs to this set. But I can of course take one because one minus one is zero and that is a even number. So one belongs to this set. Similarly, minus one also belongs to this set because minus one minus one is minus two, that is multiple of two. So it satisfies this condition. So minus one is there, similarly three is there, minus three is there, so on. So, <clears throat> so what is this set? This is basically odd integers. Same way when I take class of two, then we'll get integers y such that y minus 2 is multiple of 2. So in, in other words, I will select all the integers y so that y is of the form 2k plus 2 for some integer k. Right. So what will be the integers y which is of this form? So if, if, you, if you take k to be 0, then we'll get 2. If I take k to be 1, I will get 4. If I take k to be minus 1, then I will get 0. Right. Then if I take k to be minus 2 then it will be minus 2 then k to be minus 3 it will be minus 4 and so on so here you will see that when you complete this set this will be all e1 integers right so this is set of all e1 integers and this set is set of all odd integers so now if i go further and i will find class of three then you can again check that this is set set of all odd integers again so what is happening is class of one is also odd integers and class of three is also odd integers 
so what is happening is basically we are getting class of 1 is class of 3 is class of minus 1 and so on and same way class of 0 is class of 2 is class of minus 2 and so on so the function which we are getting is we will get the quotient map pi which will be the map from x x is set of integers to x quotient tilde so x quotient tilde are all these cosets and it it the what is the map map is that pi of some integer say m is class of m so this m has only two choices if it falls in these choices then it is set of all odd integers and if this m uh, so m is even then the, it will fall here and that will give, give us set of all even integers so what i'm saying is this output is has is only two sets either it is set of odd integers or it is set of even integers all right so only two sets belongs to this set so what are the cosets basically there are only two cosets one is set of odd integers and other is set of even integers so in short we can write it as a class of 0 and class of 1 so only these two sets are there other sets are essentially uh, either equals to this one or this one so only two disjoint sets belong to this element so in other words this is nothing but z2 if you are aware of uh, what is meaning of z2 it has only two elements 0 and 1 so it is a addition modulo 2 right so this set is it is clear that pi is on 2 because you take either this set or this set or integers or even integers you will always find one m so that box m will be either this set or this set right so this map is always on to so here we have checked it is on to on z but uh, in general you can verify that because if x is zero. so why why these sets are same box of one and box of three because one is equivalent to three And why 1 is equivalent to 3? Because 2 divides 3 minus 1. What is 3 minus 1? It is 2. So 2 divides 2. So therefore 1 and 3 are same. And whenever uh, 1 and 3 are equivalent. And then we know that if x is equivalent to y, you can only leave. Class of x is same as class of y. Alright, so therefore the classes are same same so we are getting his function which is canonical surjection now question is that what we have started is we started with uh, equivalence relation right uh, ex the set x was given we discuss equivalence classes on that and then we define the quotient map and then we said that the quotient map is surjective this map is surjective so now question is that if i have a surjective map then 
can i get a quotient map right can i get a map uh, phi from x to x quotient tilde so that is the next thing let us go to that part which uh, you may not have observed so this thing what i discuss uh, is uh, usually uh, discussed in uh, group theory or number theory which you may have seen already uh, <clears throat> so the question is that if i have subjective map <clears throat> so can i get a equivalence relation using this so then we will show that there uh, then we get a equivalence relation on, on x defined by so f is a function from x to y which is on to so using just this information we can define equivalence relation on the elements of x so how we define so we define x e equivalent to y if fx is exactly f of y so this relation we will check that it is a equivalence relation and uh, this will give us a, uh, a corresponding map so so if if this holds then we get an induced map uh, induced bijective function which is a function from x cosine tilde to y and it is given by it applied on equivalence class of x is defined as H, H of equivalence class of X is defined as Fx. <clears throat> right. So let us verify this. So, so of course we'll get something more out of this. But let us first check that whether this uh, H function exists and whether this is an equivalence relation. So note that. x is equivalent to x why because fx is same as f of x right what is our definition of equivalence relation x is related to y if and only if f of x should be f of y so we know that for every x fx is always f of x right and since fx is f of x, x is always equivalent to x. So therefore, this is reflexive. So same way, let us check the second property. So for second property, we need to check it is symmetric. So assume that x is related to y. 
so x is related to y means by definition it says that so what is the definition of equivalence relation let us go to that so x is related to y if fx and i phi are same so we are given f x is related to y that means we will get fx is exactly f of y by the definition of equivalence relation right and now what i want to show for reflexivity i want to show y is related to x and uh, to show y is related to x we need to check fy equal to fx and fy is equal to fx because we know fx is equal to fy so this is true because fx is equal to f of y so we have verified that it is reflexive and symmetric now third property is transitivity so assume that x is related to y and y is related to z so we want to show x is related to z so from this uh, it is clear that fx equal to fy and fy equal to fz right and uh, if we combine these two equation what we will get is fx equal to f of y f of y equal to f of z so fx and fz are same and once fx and fz are same what we will get is we will go from here to here so what we will get is x is related to z by the definition of equivalence relation right so so far we have not used that f is a by uh, f is a onto map we just use the definition of the equivalence relation uh, we, we just use the definition of the relation whatever we define and we have proved that it is a equivalence relation so now we will use that uh, what we will get out of the condition that f is surjective <clears throat> right so define a function h from so now since uh, what we got is therefore this is an equivalence relation so using this equivalence relation now we can discuss its equivalence classes right so we have this equivalence classes the set of equivalence classes on which we are defining the function h which which takes values in y so how we are defining this it is defined by So I will apply H on an equivalence class. So equivalence class is of this form. So I will define it to be Y. Right. So first thing to check is H is well defined. Second thing we will show is H is on to, and uh, we will also show that it is injective. So let us try to prove that why it is it, it is well defined. So first of all, it is clear that uh, since 
एफ इज सब्जेक्टिव फॉर ईच y element of y there exist x in x so that fx equal to y right so uh, yeah so what we are defining is h of box x is f of x actually so the definition is that Uh, you you take any y in y, right? So I should get one x that h of box x is f x. So what I started is I started with any y, which is element of capital Y. Since f is subjective, I will always get x so that f x is y, right? So such a x always exists. So therefore, we can talk about this function. and uh, what what we know about uh the well defined well definedness of h so for well definedness we need to show so whenever it is a kind of reverse process then the showing the function is 1 1 so in function is 1 1 we show h x equal to h y implies x equal to y so instead of that we will show here that if x 1 is equal to x 2 then h of x 1 is equal to h of x 2 so we will prove this so let us start with uh, left hand side so suppose the equivalence class of x1 is same as equivalence class of x2 so from the understanding of equivalence classes we know that two equivalence classes are same if the elements are related so x1 and x2 equivalence class is same if and only if x1 is Related to x two, right? So this is coming from the properties of equivalence classes, and uh, what does this means? So the relation which we have considered is x one is related to x two if and only if f of x one is exactly f of x two, right? And uh, what is f of x one and f of x two? F of x one is, by definition of h, it is h of x one. Right? These two are same by the definition of h. And same way, this is nothing but h of x two. So what we proved is, if I take two inputs which are same, I will get two output which are same. This is exactly the well-definedness of this function. So H, which we are defining, use on on a bijective using the bijective function, uh, using the surjective function F, is well-defined function. And uh, since I have written if and only if, you can see that. H is also one one, right? First we prove the forward part, but the reverse part is also true because H X one is H X two implies F X one is F X two implies X one is related to X two implies X one and X two as the same equivalence class. So what finally we we'll get is therefore H is well defined. as well as h is injective
right <coughs> now what i want to show is h h is subjective so why h is subjective because so put that uh, we know that every element of y there exist x so that fx is y right and once we get fx we can get uh, h of box x is nothing but f of x so therefore what we get is for all y in y there exist x in x so that h of box x is y so this is same as h is on to so what what we discuss is we got the function uh, which is a bijective so let us uh, recall what uh, or summarize what we have understood so far so if f from x to y is surjective map so that means i have a function f from x to y and this gives us a equivalence relation so once i will have equivalence relation i can discuss equivalence class so i will get the quotient map which is uh, x quotient tilde right and uh, what we just discussed now is we, we will get the function a, h which is a map from x quotient tilde to y so this diagram commutes so what is meaning of the diagram commutes that means that h composition pi is f so what does this means this means that h pi x is same as fx so what is pi x pi x is nothing but class of x so this is same as h of class of x is f of x so this follows we already know this is true by the definition of h right so that put this diagram commutes because this is true so this is true and whenever this is true this will also follow so every <coughs> function x from x quotient tilde is onto function and whenever we are given onto function we can get a, a a quotient map which satisfies this this property so what we have discussed is that there is a one one correspondence between bijective functions and the quotient maps So let let us uh, so basically what we are concerned here is we are concerned here with uh, uh, subjective functions. Yes. Any question? Okay. So so what are the quotient maps? Let us uh, let us see from the. So this is just motivation coming from the. group theory but from topological point of view what is the definition of quotient map so i have a function x f from x to y which a which is a surjective function
<coughs> and uh, x is a topological space so x is a topological space means i know what are the open sets in x which are the elements of tau so i know function f and i know what are the open sets in x so question is can i find all the open sets in y which makes this function f continuous so that is the definition of quotient topology so what is quotient topology let us see the definition So the quotient topology. We define quotient topology on Y. <coughs> so it is actually induce inducing from X. F and X. is the collection of subsets v of y so i have a set v which is a subset of y which is a domain co domain y is a co domain so whether y uh, v is open in y or not so if v is open in y if its inverse images under f is open in x so i know what is the topology on x that means i know all the open sets in x so using that i can decide whether f inverse v is open in x or not so if f inverse v is open in x then i will call v is open in y otherwise v is not open in Why? So this way I can decide all the open sets in Y. So basically, I am defining the sets which are open set in Y. But whether it satisfies that three properties or not of the topology, that we need to check. So what are the three properties? One is that phi belongs to this, x belongs to y belongs to this. it is close under arbitrary union and it is close under finite intersection so we need to check only that if i define open sets in this way whether it satisfies all the properties of topology or not so let us verify this uh, first lemma and uh, after that i will uh, conclude this lecture so lemma is that the quotient topology on y is a topology so quotient quotient topology on i y defined above so we said it is a topology but whether it is actually satisfies the properties of topology or not so that we will check here so as we know the first condition is that we need to check that Uh, null set is open so to show null set is open we need to show it is f inverse of some set which is open in in x right so to show phi and y are open in the quotient topology what what we need to ch check we need to check that
f inverse of y and f inverse of y is open in in x so on x we have a topology and in, in in topology we know that phi and x are open in x so what is the relation of these two sets with phi and x so we know that f inverse of phi is phi right it is a null set and since f is surjective f inverse of y is x and uh, phi and x are open sets in x so therefore phi and y are open in the quotient topology <clears throat> so note that here the function f which we are taking is an arbitrary function we are not fixing it to be any function f is a arbitrary function which is a surjective function we only know that thing about f it is only onto function nothing else so that is what we use here if f is onto f inverse y is x right because when i take inverse image of codomain it i will get the whole domain since f is onto function same way we can take a collection be a arbitrary collection of open subsets of y so what does this means this means f inverse of these sets is open in in x and then i can use x on x we have a topology so if i have open sets i can take its union which is also open in x so therefore union alpha f inverse v alpha is also open in x right because on x we have a topology so it is closed under arbitrary unions and then we know that this set we can write as a f inverse of union alpha v alpha so if you remember we have verified this property uh, in the first lecture of the course right that if i have two sets the f inverse of v1 union v2 is same as f in f inverse v1 plus f uh, union f inverse u2 so that we are using and then we know this is open so therefore this is open so therefore union alpha v alpha is open in in the quotient topology on y so since f inverse of this set is open the set itself is open that is the definition of quotient topology and uh, third property is uh, closed under finite intersection so it follows similarly as in property 2 so in property 2 we have checked for arbitrary union instead of that we can take here finite intersection 
so third property will also follow in this case so whatever function is given which is on to using topology on x we can define a topology on y which topology is known as the quotient topology so any any question so far so this is what i think we can cover for today's lecture